Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and you're watching The Rural Companion. Today's video is the highlight reel or our itinerary from our recent family vacation to the island of Oahu. Recently, our family went on a once in a lifetime vacation to Hawaii. We stayed on the island of Oahu for eight days and we went all over the island. Now for the past several weeks, I have been posting all of the footage from that vacation. While I love all of the footage from our vacation, I also realize that it is a lot and it, most of it is just special memories for our family. So in case you are planning a trip to Hawaii, specifically the island of Oahu, I want to give you a rundown of each of the places that our family visited during our eight day trip. The first day that we arrived in Oahu, it was a Saturday early afternoon. We were exhausted from traveling for many hours and most likely this will be your experience too. With our package that we had planned out, we ended up getting a budget rental car, which meant we waited a very long time for that car. So most of our first day was spent flying and hanging out at the rental car agency at the airport. That evening, once we checked into our hotel, we took a quick walk over to Hawaii's most famous Waikiki Beach. We just put our feet in for this first day because we weren't planning on getting in and then our kids had other plans. The second day or our first full day in Hawaii, we actually spent the whole day at Waikiki Beach. We went in the morning, came back, had some lunch, then we went back for the evening and it was fantastic. We did walk around for a bit trying to find the perfect dinner location and ended up at Tommy Bahamas, which I don't actually have any footage of, but I highly recommend. It was probably my second or third favorite meal of Hawaii. On our second full day in Hawaii, we went to the Pearl Harbor National Memorial. Now this, I absolutely hands down recommend 100%. If you are going to Oahu, you have to go to Pearl Harbor. Not only did we spend several hours at the Pearl Harbor site, we then drove over to the Aviation Museum, which is on base. So if you don't have base access, you will have to take a shuttle, which they do have running around the clock each day. And I would just recommend that you prepare for extra time, obviously, because you're waiting on someone else's time schedule. We, like I said, did have base access. So we were able to go over in our own vehicle, well, our rental car, and we were able to take as much time as we wanted on that side. It was very neat, very hot, and fabulous for aviation uh, buffs like my husband and my son. After we finished up at the Aviation Museum, we then went over to the USS Missouri, also called the Mighty Mo. We did a quick tour of that, and we had to hurry back so that we didn't miss our ferry time to go across the water to the USS Arizona Memorial. Now, we spent from when the Pearl Harbor Museum opened to when they closed, so the entire operating hours at all of the exhibits that they had. And I believe that we could have spent an additional day there because it felt like we were constantly rushing through all of the exhibits. Now, probably a few ways you could expedite this is making sure you have your tickets purchased in advance, which we did. And then of course, taking your own vehicle. Um, I think we did take a little longer for lunch and possibly that would be some way to shorten um, the time that we had. So maybe prepare for that. I'm honestly not really sure. We had a great time at the whole entire Pearl Harbor and it was such a meaningful and memorable experience that I really wouldn't do it any other way. Just maybe if we had a little bit more time. Now our third day, we ended up hiking many, many, many miles. 
each of the three locations that we went to claimed that their hiking trails were just around a mile or mile and a half round trip. And I believe that each of them were a little longer than that. So we started off at Diamond Head National Monument. Then we went to the Makapu Lighthouse Trail. In the third location that we hiked at was Waimea Falls. Now this was a complete Honestly, all three of them were a completely different uh, terrain and they were just lovely, breathtaking. Diamond Head was more of your desert style. The Makapu uh, Lighthouse Trail was paved and it was right along the cliffs and the ocean. And then of course the Waimea Falls was more of your jungly style, um, very wet, lush, and it even rained several times. Not only did we go on these three gorgeous hikes, but we also stopped at a beach for about an hour or so in the early afternoon to cool off. It was very rocky and rather treacherous. The waves were probably the largest that we experienced anywhere on Oahu. Um, and I'll show you some footage of that. It was gorgeous again, and there was an island off in the distance. For lunch, that third day, we stopped at a very local Hawaiian style restaurant, um, very authentic food, and it is something that they are trying to recreate with the Mo Betas uh, chain that they have here in the States. Well, I guess the, the continental states. Um, mainland or whatever the the slang is um, we got the very authentic uh, meat rice and mac salad and it was just absolutely amazing a lot of better food choices that um, than you could get at Mobetta's and Yes, we did try Mobetas before we went to Hawaii and I definitely love the authentic Hawaiian food <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? On our fourth day, we toured the Dole Plantation. And then that afternoon, we also went to the Waimea Bay Beach. Now this was on the North Shore and we heard that this was one of the top five beaches to visit if you are visiting Oahu. Hands down, definitely recommend it. It was very calm and there was this massive rock that you could jump off of if you choose to. Now, obviously I didn't choose to, but everyone else in my family did. It was just a stunning and beautiful beach. Our fifth day ended up being our longest day from start to finish. We started the morning at Kualoa Ranch. Now this is where they filmed the Jurassic Park franchise movies, as well as I believe it's over a hundred other movies and shows. This was just a really fascinating and just beautiful ranch tour. We did get to see some movie sets that were still active or still uh, intact. And then they also have a working ranch there. So it was really cool. There is some World War II bunkers there. Definitely a neat experience. Because of the location of the Kualoa Ranch and the Polynesian Cultural Center, which was our next activity for the day. They were actually right near each other and about an hour from our hotel. So we did do both of those on the same day. The Polynesian Cultural Center was a very fantastic experience to learn about the culture of the Polynesian islands. They have it set up so you go to the different islands and you kind of do a, a full experience at each island. Now the package or your ticket that you buy from the Polynesian Cultural Center allows you to go for up to three days in a row, so three consecutive days. I wish that we had had time to go back another day because I really feel like we, again, we're just trying to cram everything into that afternoon. They are only open in the afternoon hours, so I believe from maybe noon to six. So really planning for two days at the Polynesian Cultural Center is phenomenal that would allow you to leisurely make it through each of the island experiences. That evening, we ate at the on-site Gateway Buffet. Let me tell you, there was so much food at this place. There was a ton, like a sea of food, fruits, vegetables. They had raw fish, poke. I mean, everything that you could expect to eat 
in Hawaii, and then also on, you know, your typical kid food, macaroni and cheese, chicken nuggets, french fries, what have you. They had so many options. I was overall very impressed with how Hawaiian culture does respect um, a lot of eating preferences, probably because they have so many people coming to visit them um, just from so many different cultures. So there were so many options. I never felt like I was forced to eat something that I didn't love. Um, and then of course, so many gluten-free options and everything was really well labeled. So it was just delicious. That evening we went to the Ha Breath of Life uh, production that the Polynesian Cultural Center put on. We were not able to do any filming during that, but just definitely a must-see performance. All in all, you could definitely just do the Polynesian Cultural Center and skip the buffet and the Ha Breath of Life if you're trying to cut budget, like cut your costs. Uh, on our last full day in Hawaii, the kids and Nathan did a surfing lesson in the morning. So this was, I wanna say it was a two hour surfing lesson. And of course, just the walking to the surf lesson and doing the tutorial and then walking back and eating lunch. It did take up the entire first half of the day. It was very fabulous for the kids to learn how to surf. And all three of them, Nathan included, rocked surfing. When we first got to the surf shop and we were reading like signs around the facility as well as watching the introductory video. Um, they were giving us, you know, the various things that could happen when you surf for the first time. And one of them was like a, da a damaging spine injury. I can't think of what it was called now. It was very scary to hear about. Um, and we just didn't realize going into that, that there was this spinal injury uh, risk with surfing for the first time. Of course, the our three didn't end up with any injuries. They were just sore. Now, our family is in pretty good shape physically. Um, my kids and husband, as well as myself, we work out on a regular basis. So for us to be sore or out of breath on all of these activities, um, I would just say, if you do go to Hawaii, make sure that you're in a really good uh place physically because a lot of the things that you do there besides sitting on the beach are very active. And then that evening we went to Paradise Cove Luau. Now the evening before at the Polynesian Cultural Center, it was a very similar experience. However, they were both completely separate. For the Luau, it was a little more, um, I guess, worldly, if you will. And then the pair or the Polynesian Cultural Center was a little bit more family friendly. Um, and I, I, it is run by the Mormon BYU, um, the school, the, the Mormons. Um, so it was a little bit more of your conservative experience. So at the Polynesian Cultural Center, there was no alcohol um, and everything was just geared towards family. The luau was definitely a little bit more um, just worldly. Of course, they were serving alcohol. And then, um, I mean, they didn't say anything bad. It was just, you know, just a slightly different experience. Now, something I love about Hawaiian culture is everybody, they call everybody family. And I just thought that was really neat. So they would say, hello, family, every time they would see us. Um, the various workers, they would call cousins, so cousin so-and-so in their name, and I thought that was just really neat. The final day that we were in Hawaii, that was the day that we were leaving, this day just kind of exploded. I think we were all absolutely exhausted. It rained for several hours in the morning, and we were just all kind of, I think, focused on getting home. When we got to the airport, we realized that our second flight was canceled. We spent the longest time trying to work with the ticket agents at the counter to get that flight rescheduled. We spent plenty of time in line. Something that I would recommend is just be prepared for lines in Oahu because 
or on Oahu <laughs> because everybody is there and with it being a tourist destination, we even went on a non-peak time. So it was just very busy, lots of people. We did at least get back to the states, the continental states, and we were able to get a rental car and drive home. So all in all, it turned out very well and we were at least able to get home <laughs> without um, having to stay at the airport any longer. So now that I gave you the itinerary, let me go over my top three places on Oahu. If you can only pick three places because of time constraints or budgetary reasons, these are the must go destinations. Number one, Kualoa Ranch. Number two, Polynesian Cultural Center. And number three, the Pearl Harbor National Monument. Now, as far as beaches, we went to beaches all around the island of Oahu. The Eastern shore seemed to be the more rough side. The North shore seemed to be most calm and we were there in the beginning of May. The uh, Southern part of Oahu was just very, kind of just almost smack in the middle of calm and kind of wild. So we had plenty of waves that kids were able to surf, um, enjoy kind of riding the waves with uh, floaties and things like that, but it wasn't rough enough to knock you over like it was at the Makapu Point um, in that region. Okay, now let's talk numbers. Now I am looking at the Hawaii Vacation Guide, uh, their website, and I just typed in specifically how much does a trip to Hawaii cost for a family of four. Now over the past couple years, the prices have fluctuated. This is definitely due to all of the stuff that is going on um, around the world and specifically with COVID and stuff like that. So ironically, in 2021, it was the lowest cost in the past couple years to go to Hawaii for a family of four, and that was around $8,900. It continued to increase in 2022 and 2023, and for whatever reason, it dropped ever so slightly in 2024. The website gives you kind of a rough estimate for a family of four for 10 days on the island of Oahu, specifically just the one island. And some of their numbers, I'm not quite sure how they came up with them specifically. We did a bundle package for our airfare, hotel, and car rental. And and I'm not sure how that compares to exactly what they have listed on their website. They're saying airfare is around $2,000, hotel is around four, and car rental is about 1,000. They did guesstimate that food cost about $2,100 and activities were roughly around $1,900. And again, this is for the year of 2024, which is this year. All that to say, our family was there for only eight days, and we had, of course, the one snafu of not only did we pay for the airfare in a bundle, so when it came time for our flight to get canceled, we actually didn't get a refund for that flight, and then we had to get an additional rental car to go back home, um, so then there was the extra gas. Um, just various things kind of come up. And some of their activities, I'm trying to look and see. Oh, the other thing, they say that their flights are going just from California. And of course we went from Oklahoma to Texas to Oahu. And then also this includes two adults, two children. And both of our kids are pretty much all across the board, not children anymore. So most places, the cutoff is around 12 or 13, and our youngest is 12. So he didn't qualify for many of the kid prices. Some things he did, and so we were still able to have one kid, but then for our daughter, she was considered an adult at everywhere, pretty much everywhere we went. The, um, the website also only lists three activities that you're doing, um, and to give you that 1900 
amount and then they recommend that you do free activities for the rest of it and we did activities every day that did cost something um with the exception of i think the makapu'u point did not cost anything waimea bay that didn't cost anything waikiki beach we didn't pay anything for that because we were able to walk from our hotel we didn't have to like pay for parking i think that was the bulk of it was we had to pay for parking everywhere we went and then each place that we went to had a cost. Um, so I believe that's where we probably spent the most was on our activities. Now, the final number of our trip to Oahu is, I'm not telling. <laughs> That's basically where it is. Um, we, I will tell you this, we did pay for it in chunks, but we paid for it in full. We put things on credit card that you have to, for example, um, when you're booking things online, you have to run things through a credit card. Um, so we did pay for it that way, but then we would pay it off immediately. Um, and then we made sure that as we went, we were just saving. Um, so from when we, we bought our, hotel, airfare, and rental car package about six months in advance. We had saved for that, and then we saved for the next several months for the activities. And then of course we had an additional amount that we needed to save and prepare for, for food and just things that come up while we were there. All in all, I think it was an absolutely amazing family experience. We probably won't ever go on a trip quite as fancy or fabulous as Hawaii, but I am so thankful that we were able to do this. Um, of course, it was there was so much that went in, into it from, you know, saving and preparing, um, making sure that our animals were taken care of while we were gone. We just kind of have a lot going on here. So just working all of that out, I definitely would urge you to just prioritize family vacations and they don't have to be to elaborate places. And I often say that we can have fun on a budget anywhere we go. And in fact, that's typically what we do. We get somewhere and I buy a loaf of bread and I buy food and we cook in the crock pot so that we can do the big and the fun things. Obviously I didn't take a crock pot to Hawaii and we just kind of went with it. Um, and had such a really fun time. Okay, so that was the highlight reel for Oahu, an eight-day family vacation. If you have gone and you have other recommendations, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below, and I hope that you have a great summer. Fit in some travel somewhere, some sort of beach or outdoor fun thing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.